Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video, let's get a fuzzy on it, I want to show you guys how I make these uh, polymer clay settings for the dragon eyes that we make, if the camera will focus on it. Which you may or may not, we'll see, but let's get started. <laughs> hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be using Sculpey 3. Um, but that's because I'm making it quite thick. A lot of folks uh, don't like Sculpey 3, and if you're one of them, I recommend using Primo Sculpey or Kato or Cernet or any of these other high quality polymer clays. Um, taking it out of its package, I use about an ounce, so a half a brick, to make a single eye, um, but there's quite a bit of scrap left over. So we're just going to start by conditioning it. Uh, the Sculpey 3 is much, much softer. If you have problems with it being brittle or breaking, I actually bake mine for about 45 minutes. So, uh, like, th that's three times what the package says. So, I've been folding and rolling, ro folding and rolling until it's very well incorporated, and now we're going to be passing it through on the thickest setting on the pasta machine. And this is the Sculpey Silver. I really love their metallic stuff, their effects, because it's just... Haha, ha, clever editing, sorry. <laughs> um, laying it down on, just, this is just a very basic tile from like Home Depot or Lowe's or something. Uh, it was like 50 cents, but I can put it into my toaster oven. So I like to build my projects on one of these tiles. This is one of our dragon eyes that we had painted. It's a 30 by 22 millimeter. And I try to not leave it sitting on the unbaked clay for too long. So uh, like maybe like a day but if you leave it on there for too long, the unbaked clay can start to react with some of the nail polishes and paints that we use on our dragon eyes. And I'm making just some little tapered end logs out of more of the polymer clay, and these are going to be the lids of the eye. Now, with the sculpting, it really is, like, once you have the structure of it down, you can sculpt it to look however you like. You could put texture on this, you could have it be different shapes, you could have it be more squared off. Um, it looks very cool if you use like a Skinner blend where that's like with polymer clay where you like kind of gradiate from one color to another um, by mixing the clay that certain way. Um, there's just so many different things that you can do. But yeah, so I'm just kind of shaping and testing and reshaping the clay and then we're going to get it down onto our base layer. That I'm kind of just building everything on and tapping it into place. It bonds to itself pretty well, polymer clay does, whenever you're baking it. So using a craft knife, uh, my work surface is a very fancy four foot folding table from like a decade ago. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it's not very particular what kind of work surface you use so long as it works. I'm just cutting up little bits of clay and shaping them into little rounds. And we're gonna do that a lot because we use a lot of those rounds in this design. And again, you could you could have um you could have made a leaf cane or something or like uh just anything really and kind of made little shapes out of it. You'll see how we'll be implementing those here in a little bit. So now I'm rolling out a very long thin snake and sectioning it up into smaller portions. And then I think I'm I'm even going to have to section this down just a little bit more. Uh, even because I want to get a nice kind of shorter length on this. I did make some dragon eyes like this in one of our live streams and y'all did re uh, the viewers um, of that live stream who were hanging out with us were like yes please make a tutorial about this so this is the tutorial for that so thank you guys for requesting it. If you do have any other requests for tutorials please leave those down in the comment section and I'll do my best to uh, to make those tutorials for you guys. So now that I have a bunch of little thin snakes and a bunch of little rounds made, I'm going to go through, and this is just a short-handled Phillips head screwdriver, and it, you could use anything to leave some sort of texture, but I really like make, kind of just making them look steampunky. But a lot of the leather working tools that I have, I really like the patterns that they leave behind. And uh, down in the video description, not only will be the links to the tools and materials used in this video, but there'll also be a link to where on our website you can go and see our curated tool chest. And that's a listing of all the different tools and materials that we use for a lot of our different crafts. And so if it's something like our leather working tools that we also use with polymer clay, um, you can go and kind of check that out 
and if there are any requests of something that you'd like to see uh, d kind of discussed or described on our website, please let us know. Hyper time lapse time. We're just making a bunch of little curled like snail shell style spirals and I'm using the back side of my craft knife to kind of smush the rounds down and this rubber tipped clay tool for shaping the spirals. And before going too much further, I am going to cut the shape of the eye out. You could have done this initially and kind of built around and over the edges. Um, there's no particular reason that I did it this way except for that's the way that I did it. And I do that on both sides. It's a lot easier to remove more material than it is to try to add more on, so uh, like to add more clay onto it. So don't feel like you have to get it perfect on the first cut. Now I'm going through with a dotting tool, like a ball stylus, and just kind of taking the harshness out of that sharp edge from where we just cut. And I'm doing that all the way around through the magic of editing. It goes by much faster. <laughs> and voila! And you could do all sorts of different textures. Now this is a spring green pearlex pigment that by Jacquard that I'm using. And uh, I had started to apply it and then realized that I didn't do the little textures and all the dots that I wanted to do because by going through and using my finger uh, the pearlex pigment would just be getting on the top points like the high points of our clay and our sculpting so it's kind of just highlighting and I do like to do this before the clay is baked because the clay is still nice and sticky and that way the, the mica powders stick really well uh, I used to use eyeshadow and I get a lot of folks asking about using eyeshadow. It can, do, it actually works pretty well. The only thing that I watch out for is not all eyeshadows uh, are made the same, like a lot of them are not color fast over the years, so if it's something that's like in an outdoor sculpture or a fairy house or something, uh, the colors can sun bleach very easily, they can fade, and some of them even have oils and stuff in them that are great for your skin but don't necessarily age well on the polymer clay. They can actually start to eat into the polymer clay. Um, but if it's what you have, go for it. <laughs> um, but uh, I do recommend if you really, really like crafting of any sort to use some Pearlex pigments because they work well with polymer clay. I use them in my leather working, I use them in my resin casting, all sorts of stuff. It's just using a needle tool to get a little glob of, a little boogie of clay off of there. And an alternate method that you can use if you don't want to just be using your fingertip because it's a little slow in application, honestly, um, is you could just use a, a paintbrush. Now be mindful, this stuff is not good for your lungs, so don't be like fluffing it up in the air and going crazy. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, uh, I always keep an air purifier over by my desk and that kind of pulls the air away from me. And but a, a, a respirator mask or something of the sort would be a really good idea. Safety first. And you can see that lays down a lot more pigment, a lot more evenly uh, on the clay in a really nice manner. It, it, and if I do a little bit more, yeah, like kind of the side to side dry brushing like that, then it just catches the tops a little bit more. But we're going to be going through and doing an antique later, so I'm not too worried about getting like perfectly just on the highlights. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also don't dip my brush straight into the jar and then go right onto my project. I like to go from the jar to the cap and onto the project. That way it doesn't leave globs of the mica powder. Now it has been baked. I baked for uh, 20 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit because I'm going to be going through and baking again. I just wanted to do something just enough to get my original, like the, the top part of the eye that we've sculpted already set. That way I'm not like ruining my work. <clears throat> Here I'm using a 16 gauge dead soft aluminum wire from parawire.com. They're my highest recommendation for wire like anywhere. Like great customer service, great products, all that. This is not a paid sponsorship. I just really like their stuff. And I'm making almost like the end of a safety pin if you can kind of think how it's that like double loop, but instead of being a safety pin, I decided to make a cute little spiral because 
that's how I roll. So what we're going to be doing here now is r repeating what we've done on the other side because we're making the internal hardware to make our sculpture into something wearable like a necklace or a pendant. So the way that this hardware ends up looking is going to is going to be determined entirely by what you'd like to do with it. You could skip this step completely and just like uh, set some magnets in the back for making a fridge ornament or uh, apply it with some Mod Podge or epoxy or something to the cover of a sketchbook. I mean, really anything, anything that you can think of. Make it like the cover of a lid on a box. Um, an alternative to making internal hardware like this would be to use, like to drill a little hole after baking and screw in one of those eyelets that has like a screw base. But I've found even with the use of super glue, those can tend to slip out over time or break in the like break the clay. So I really like making like an almost an an armature, but not really. Uh, I'm since the front piece is already baked, I'm using liquid sculpey in silver just because it matches uh, to kind of hold everything together. And I've bent the piece around to where the pupil I wanted to be the center point. So the pupil itself is centered and vertical. Um, I'm not so worried about the rest of the placement of the eye. And then I've cranked out more clay on the thickest setting on the pasta machine and being very careful to not trap any air bubbles. I'm kind of smushing it on there. <laughs> Once I've got a solid smush going, I'm going to use my craft knife to trim away the excess and kind of working around the little like Shrek ear style <laughs> uh, loops that we have coming out of the sides. And if you don't have a craft knife, you can just use your claws like a barbarian, um, but it still works. And so again, just trying to smush it all together, make really good connection because we're going to be baking this for like another 30 minutes at least, 30 to 45 minutes. I'm going to check it at the 30 minute mark and just make sure that it's not burning. But um, it's going to be well, well molded together, like well fused. And that liquid clay really helps with that. So now again, I'm going through with the same uh, ball stylus, like a stipling tool, and adding that texture all the way around. All the way around. <laughs> and it really does, I think, help um, make everything look pretty cool. And this is also a great opportunity to sign your work. I sign all of my sculptural pieces and paintings and stuff, anything that can be signed really, with the R and Y of my partner Randy and I, um, and my name is Yvonne so it starts with a Y. On a piece that just I've worked on, I do the dot by my name. On a piece that just Randy has worked on, we do a dot by his, and on a piece that we work together, we both get a dot. And then we put the year, um, so that's kind of our company way of signing things. I'm just using a matte black, very inexpensive acrylic paint and globbing it on. Into, I, I've added a little bit of water to make it flow into the low points a little easier, but that's not necessary. You could use oil paint here as well. This is just what I have, uh, the black acrylic, and I like it pretty well. Also, it does bake well too, so you don't have to worry about any fumes or anything or any discoloration. Um, if you wanted to do the antiquing and then find yourself needing to do a little bit more sculptural work. Whereas I personally don't have any experience with baking the oil clay, not oil clay, um, <laughs> oil paint. So if any of y'all have experience with that, please leave a comment down below with uh, your experience. And so I really like how like the black antique really just makes a huge difference. We've let that dry completely. I do paint the front and the back and wipe it down. I um, just didn't capture that on camera. And I have a clean brush, and I'm using Mod Podge Hard Coat, which says that it can take 30 days to cure. I can wear my jewelry the next day. It holds up pretty well, um, but you might be more particular about following instructions than I am. I am not a good <laughs> instruction follower, and I'm applying very, very thinly. Um, this is a protective varnish and sealer for the polymer clay, and not so much that it needs sealed as it'll keep it, it'll keep what's on there on there if you splatter more paint on it and want to wash it. Uh, the hard coat is very, very durable. It dries clear, and it doesn't have any, like, weird smells or anything. I don't think you should eat it. Like, don't, don't be weird. <laughs> um... But yeah, I really practice basic like arts and crafts safety 
I don't don't eat it, don't put it in your eyeballs, but for the most part, it's uh, pretty easy to work with. <clears throat> like, it's not going to stink up your house or anything the way that some of the urethanes I've used in the past can. And I'm just applying it. If it gets on the glass um, before the 30-day cure time, go through with a craft knife whenever it is dry and just kind of scrape it off the surface of the glass eye. That'll be perfectly fine. And I paint that onto the front and let it dry for about an hour, and then I flip it over and paint it onto the back, and then I do two coats, one on the front, or two on the front, two on the back, uh, like that. You can use a second clean paintbrush to clean up any overfill, like overflows or heavily applied areas. But yeah. And that is how we make one of these polymer clay dragon eyes. Hey y'all, thank you so much for joining me in this video. I do hope that it was helpful to you. The same techniques demonstrated here can be used on all sorts of different styles of uh, settings. You could use different colored clays with like Skinner blends and different things. You could add beads and spiky bits and different components and even little elements of pre-baked clay. Um, sky's the limit, it really is. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Sorry, there's like a whole list of things that I keep forgetting to make a list of that I'm supposed to say at the end of all the videos to be like a professional YouTuber. <laughs> uh, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> I don't know, just thank you guys so much for coming and spending your time here with us today. Um, I do hope that this was helpful to you. Like that's, that's the whole reason I do these videos um, is, to, is to, you know, maybe Maybe you'll have learned something that uh, makes your job a little easier as a jewelry designer. Maybe we'll have uh, lured you down the uh, rabbit hole of crafting addiction. You know, there's no telling. And also, I learn a lot from you guys on these. So I want to thank you guys so much. Everybody who comments down, uh, you know, the, who leaves comments on all of our videos. Everybody who's sharing pictures on our Discord. Links down below. Um, <laughs> and just everything. Y'all inspire me every day so thank you guys so much um oh that was a brain fart wasn't it yep okay <laughs> if you enjoy our free tutorials and you would like to support the creation of more of them please consider joining us over on patreon for as little as a dollar a month you can get uh, previews like um, you can see our videos up to a week before they go public on YouTube you can get your work featured in our videos as well as be on our websites featured artisan page if you're interested in participating in that as well as we do our patron exclusive live streams on Saturdays you get early access to our auctions that we have once a month um, all, all that stuff so and that's just for a dollar the more you pledge the more you get we do our monthly craft along kits and just all sorts of different stuff so uh, and that's kind of our way of trying to thank you guys for everything that you do for us um yeah I think that's it if there's anything that I forgot it's down in the video description below check out our website because just here recently we made one <laughs> well we had one but we made it usable <laughs> I am not a web designer, but I had a lot of fun actually. Uh, it's been a while now and I've been updating the website with our curated toolkit so that you can see all the different tools and doodads and things that we like to use with our sculpting and with our wire wrapping and our chain mail and all that different stuff. Um, but yeah, if you want to see what's in our toolkit, um, go check that out. But yeah, until next time you guys, happy crafting. Bye. Oh yeah, and I have a vlog. That'll be up on the screen somewhere. <laughs> Bye, guys. <Mwah. laughs>